Now, we go to Yerevan. Uh, Richard uh, Giragosian is the director of Regional Studies uh, Centre. That's an independent think tank in Armenia. He joins us live from the capital. First of all, um, what is the mood like there in the country right now? Well, clearly it's tense. As we've seen, we have an unprecedented intervention of the military into the political arena. It is, however, an aberration. And we see no sign of troop movement or any further action. Nevertheless, the fact that over three dozen senior Armenian military officials are now openly opposed to the government represents an escalation of a pre-existing political crisis. But there seems to be much less likelihood of an outright military coup. But unfortunately, the prime minister's response has been counterproductive. And so calling on his just to be clear there, into the street. Richard, could you repeat what you said um, with regards to this uh, being an, uh, an attempted military coup? Is it or isn't this it? This is much less a real military coup because there's been no troop deployment or movement. Nevertheless, their intervention into the political arena is especially significant. But the only way out of this conflict is early elections. And the prime minister remains stubbornly resistant. Nevertheless, the dissent within the armed forces is a serious complicating factor. And um, we've seen the prime minister walking through the capital, Yerevan, with his protesters uh, for the past few hours. He's, uh, he's got a, a microphone now set up. He's, he's about to speak. What message does this send and what has this been sending uh, as he's been walking uh, through the streets of the capital with his supporters? I think it's a serious strategic mistake by the prime minister. It undermines his own legitimacy in being freely elected, and it diminishes the office of the institutions of democracy. And it's only going to further polarize society. The real way forward is, nevertheless, an early election. But the other factor here is the military coming out openly against the government only demonstrates the severity and the scale of the unresolved political conflict. And we saw um, on Facebook the Ministry of Defence saying that uh, serious mistakes in foreign policy have brought the country to the brink of collapse. And, of course, they were demanding Pashinyan to step down. What were those mistakes that they were referencing? Well, clearly, part of the motivation for the military recently in opposing the government is to distract or to obscure their own incompetence during the 44-day war with Azerbaijan. But it's not just the lack of responsibility, but the government's lack of accountability in terms of adjusting to the post-war reality and actually admitting failure and incompetence. And we're looking at uh, crowds there in, in Yerevan, uh, it looks like, you know, we've been speaking about this for the past few hours. Numbers are, are growing. What happens next? How does this, you know, where does this go from here? Well, interesting, Russia is in a precarious position, but still seems intent on staying safe in backing the government because the rival opposition is widely discredited and it would be risky for Russia to change horses. At the same time, the prime minister cannot continue this crisis. In other words, the conflict internally is unsustainable, and there is a necessity for an early election. Having said that, we do expect a degree of further polarization before we come out of this crisis. And you say the real way forward are our early elections. Who could be? Is there a contender for prime minister? Well, Interestingly, according to many public opinion surveys, the prime minister's ruling party still has a working majority and is expected to secure a reduced but substantial uh, majority in the event of an early election. The fresh mandate will turn the page. The opposition, because of its ties to the corrupt former government, are widely discredited and deeply unpopular. And 
how much support does he have from the public? Because we've seen calls um, brewing uh, for him to step down for some time. He still maintains and retains a working silent majority, if you will. Much less about his own popularity and much more driven by the absence of any credible rival or any real opposition of any popularity. And unfortunately, it's a sad indictment of politics in Armenia where there is no real alternative. And uh, Richard, when you saw this announcement by the military and the scenes there from Yerevan, did it come as a surprise to you? Well, it is a surprise because it's unprecedented. The military's politicization is very much an aberration and unprecedented. At the same time, the prime minister himself is responsible in terms of reckless leadership and because it was triggered by the prime minister's dismissal of the deputy uh, commander of the, of the armed forces. Richard uh, Geragosian, director of the Regional Studies Centre, joining us from uh, the Armenian capital, Yerevan.